update. Am I the a-hole for buying my daughter a gift when I didn't buy my fiancé's kids one? Original post. My 30 male daughter's 14 female Nintendo Switch completely stopped working earlier this week. She got it the month it was released, March 2017, and has kept it in good condition for over six years. Yesterday, she had her conference cross-country meet, where she both PR'd and qualified to run state. To celebrate her new achievements, I took her out to eat, and then bought her a new Nintendo Switch with a game she picked out. My fiancé, 38 female, came back from her parents earlier today and saw my daughter playing with her Switch. She asked me about it after my daughter left with her boyfriend, and I told her that I wanted to celebrate her accomplishments in her running career, so I got her a new Switch as a gift. Fiancé then got really angry and told me that if I'm going to buy my daughter something, then I have to be fair and buy her own kids something too. 19 female, 16 male, 13 male. I pointed out that I do buy her kids gifts, but they reach goals and achievements too. For example, I bought my stepdaughter an expensive Hello Kitty necklace as a high school graduation gift, and I let both the boys pick out two video games when they both pass their final exams. She told me that it's unfair I spend more on my daughter than I do on her kids, because I make a lot more than her. Fiancé then got angrier and accused me of not liking her kids because of the different financial treatment between her kids and my kid. She left with her two sons, but her daughter stayed with me at a house because she's on my side. I got a bunch of texts from her family calling me a selfish a-hole for treating her kids differently when buying gifts. Am I the a-hole? Edit. To answer some common questions because there's a lot of comments and it's hard to get all of them in a timely manner. How does your fiancé treat your daughter? My daughter and fiancé don't interact much. They're polite to each other but they simply don't talk much, aside from small talk and my daughter asking her some questions about cooking food. I have mentioned to my daughter before that if my fiancé ever were to mistreat her, she needs to tell me, and I will always have her back no matter what. To my knowledge, my fiancé doesn't mistreat her at all. They just don't talk much. Do you have a will or trust fund in place? I have a will set up that gives my daughter everything. My will is safe with a very trusted lawyer friend of mine. I also have a trust in place for my daughter, and she will gain full access to it once she turns 21. Did you have this argument in front of her children? No, she called her kids down and told them what we were arguing about. I told them my side, and her sons took her side and left with her. What is your relationship like with her kids? How are they with your daughter? My relationship with her sons is unfortunately minimal. I try to talk to them about their favorite topics or hobbies, and they either ignore me or shut the conversation down as soon as possible. I don't talk to them much either, other than when they come to me for advice on things like school, friends, etc. My relationship with her older daughter is very good though, I'd like to think we are close. As for my daughter, she doesn't talk to her stepbrothers much, but she's extremely close with her older sister. Hope this clears up some things. Added to, to clear up another few common things being mentioned, my fiancé has not always been this way with my daughter and me. She started getting much more defensive when my daughter finished middle school. I am not with my fiancé for sex, my drive is low and so is hers. Her children's father is not in their life and does not pay child support. My daughter's mother is not in her life either. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole and maybe reconsider marriage. Oh good, she's only a fiancé. Phew. You know, depending on how many red flags OP and where you are, that could be construed as hurricane warning. And you should seek safety. Not the a-hole. I wonder if fiancé spends equal amounts on OP's daughter too? Maybe probably not, because she has three kids to take care of. Look at post history. She kicked off a week ago after Opie bought his daughter running shoes and saying, why didn't he also spend $300 on her kids as well? I wonder how Opie doesn't see these as red flags. Not the a-hole. You're not even married and already this kind of drama has started? Red flag. If she's that particular, she can buy them gifts as well. Or you both could discuss and get all your kids appropriate gifts together. We haven't really discussed financial treatment regarding the kids, but she doesn't buy my daughter anything. I understand that because I make a lot more than her, but I didn't really think anything of her not buying things for my daughter. I'm so sorry to know that. Maybe it's time to have that talk before things get any more serious. It would probably make sense to sign a prenup just in case. She's against signing a prenup because she takes it as me thinking of her as a gold digger, which I don't think she is. We are comfortable staying engaged. She may not be a gold digger, but I am getting definite potential evil stepmother vibes off this. I would definitely get a prenup and have a current will to protect your daughter's interests just in case. 
Now for the update. I made a post yesterday asking if I was the a-hole because I didn't buy my fiancé's kids gifts when I bought my daughter one. I wanted to thank everyone for the positive feedback and the kind support, as well as the helpful advice I've gotten. A lot of people ask for an update after I have talked to fiancé, so here you go. She came back at 12 in the morning alone. She said she left the boys at her parents' place because she doesn't, in her words, want them in the presence of a man who won't provide for them. I sat her down and talked to her about a lot of things. And a lot of you are right. This is not the woman I want to marry. When I first brought up how she doesn't bring anything to the table when I pay for everything, she didn't want to talk about it and kept dodging the subject. I brought up how unfair it was of her to expect me to provide for her and her children when she doesn't do anything for my daughter and a bare minimal for me. She doesn't do house chores, she doesn't pay bills, except her and her daughter's car payments and car insurance, and she spends minimal time with both me and my daughter. Fiancé didn't say anything. Then, I talked about the financial and emotional abuse, and she freaked the heck out. She started yelling about how it was my job as the man to provide for her and her kids, when I make so much more than her, and they have no father figure. I'm all they had, and she kept bringing that up as an excuse for her behavior towards my money and how I spent it on my daughter. When I asked her about what she expected me to do about my will or a prenup, she told me that any good husband would put his wife above everyone else. She had been banking on me giving her everything I had for over a year at this point. I don't like yelling at all, but I was at my breaking point with her at this point. We yelled at each other a lot. It's not my finest moment, and I'm ashamed, but I realized that I let so much happen and my daughter suffered as a result of it. I told her about her neglect towards my child, and I will not tolerate it any longer. She's my number one priority over everyone else, and always will be. I don't think fiancé believed me when I said that, but I guess she realized I was serious when I told her to start packing. I'm done being an ADM for that lady, and it's crazy to think how strangers on an app made me realize how I was stuck in such a toxic, manipulative, and abusive relationship with her. My now ex-fiancé won't be a problem anymore, I hope. I don't think I'll be with another person for a long time, but thank you to everyone for the support and kindness. Edit, my ex's daughter will be staying with me, and I will financially support her through college, and I will also help her get her own place. Her and I are on good terms, and I want to make sure my ex will not be using her as a token to manipulate me any further. Very happy to read your update. You did the right thing. Choose your daughter every time. Wishing you both all the best. He chose both his daughters. That is outstanding that he kept her daughter too. I'm hijacking your comment because I feel strongly that Opie needs to know he is a victim of DV. Opie, I work in the DV field. A lot of men are mistreated in various ways, but what we predominantly see is financial and emotional slash mental abuse towards men. This is a lot to unravel for you, your child, and ex's daughter. Ex's daughter has probably been through so much as well with this woman as a mother. There is specialized free therapy for victims of DV going through what you are. You can call your estate's DV hotline to ask for these referrals. I work in a shelter setting, but my agency also has outpatients, and we are seeing a large increase of males finally speaking up about their experiences. Good luck on your new beginnings. I'm so proud of you. You sound like a great man and father. Wow, OB. Good for you and your daughter. We are proud of you. Make sure she and her kids have no access to your money or credit cards. May have written down account or credit card numbers. Be vigilant. If she does anything illegal, press charges. Change all your locks. Block her and everything. To include all the flying monkeys who try to defend her. Let your daughter know what's going on in case they harass her or try to make you out to be the bad guy. Your daughter will be out of the house before you know it. Spend time with her, making lasting memories for you both. Focus on you and what makes you happy and fulfilled. Take care. Double this one. Get new cards and watch your credit. If necessary, Put a hold on your credit so no new credit can be opened in your name this year without your consent and add a password to your bank, etc. Did she change her tune after you told her to pack? Any apologies? Or did she just leave bitterly? She started crying and begging me to let her stay. No apologies, though. I felt bad because she kept saying I was leaving her poor and defenseless, and now she has to stay with her parents. Next story. Am I the a-hole for contesting my ex's life insurance so my daughter got all the money and doesn't split it with her half-siblings? As part of our divorce agreement, my ex was supposed to have a million-dollar life insurance policy, with our daughter listed as the beneficiary. He was not supposed to make any changes to this policy without my approval. 
He passed away last year, and I found out that he added his other two kids to the policy without even asking me. He didn't even raise the amount of the policy. So it would have meant that our daughter would have gotten one-third of the money instead of all of it that she was supposed to get. I immediately went to a lawyer to see what could be done. He was able to get a court to stop the insurance company from paying out until this was dealt with, and it's now been officially settled. All the money put into a trust for my daughter. It has caused a bit of tension with my ex's wife, Emma, the other kid's mother to say the least. I still see her every so often when dropping off or picking up my daughter at my ex-in-laws. They're all very nice people, and fortunately have been there as a buffer so all three kids can still have a relationship with each other without Emma and I having to be too involved. However, there are still times when I drop off or pick up my daughter when I run into Emma, and every single time I do, she brings up how broke she is. Yesterday, I bumped into her again after we dropped the kids off. I admit it was my finest moment, but as I was heading to my car when she brought up being broke again, I rolled my eyes. That set her off, and she brought up the life insurance money again, and how much of a witch I was to take that money away from her kids. That they deserved the money just as much as my daughter. That they should have gotten an equal share. That is what their father wanted. That they got left with nothing because of me. Thankfully, all the kids were inside while this happened, and I decided to just leave and not engage her, but it's still bothering me. Edit. I know a lot of people are wanting me to give some of the money to her siblings, but I am not in control of my daughter's trust and cannot move the money around. I can only ask for certain expenses for my daughter to be paid for directly from the trust with the approval of the trustee. Now for the top comments. Did she know about the divorce settlement and that he had changed the policy without you knowing? If she did, then she's a victim of her own doing. I'm not really sure if she didn't know and still doesn't get it, to be honest. I mean, sucks, but the fact is that her late husband didn't set up his estate correctly or legally. And it sure looks like he tried to skirt around the rules to look good. I married my current blissful more than a decade husband when my now adult son was a child. So, I had to redo all of my life insurance and property beneficiaries and all that stuff when I remarried, and it was a pain in the butt. But then my husband and I had a daughter together and I had to do it all again, and that was also okay. But I got a lawyer to make sure everything was A-OK -okay and would not be troubled in the end. And it sounds like your ex, the father of your daughter, did not bother. So whatever legal fallout happened, well, it happened and that is best. This. Emma can blame her late husband for the fact that her kids are left with nothing. He cheaped out and knew he wouldn't be around to deal with the repercussions should the policy ever need to be used. Agreed. If he had a wherewithal to add his other two children to the policy, he had a wherewithal to increase the policy amount. But if we are being honest, he had full knowledge as to what was the divorce decree and tried to be slick. My best guess was that he thought he had time left, and by the time it passed, your child and his other children would be grown. And while it may be unfortunate for his other kids, you were well within your right to advocate for your child and enforce the validity of your divorce decree. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my ex that his children are not my problem? I, 34 female, have a 10-year-old daughter with my ex. We broke up five years ago because it got another woman pregnant. He has the weekends with our daughter. Lately, my daughter has been complaining that her dad's stepson is bullying her and her dad isn't doing anything. My ex's stepson is 15 years old, so I was shocked when she told me that he would hit her, kick her, push her down the stairs and my ex would pretend like he didn't know what's going on. She also said that her half-sister keeps taking her stuff. I called my ex after she told me all this and he said that it's just kids being kids and that our daughter should get over it. Also, that his other kids need more attention, so if my daughter can't deal with that, she shouldn't come over to his house. I yelled at him, saying that I didn't care about his other kids' problems. He should stop mistreating our daughter. He then hung up on me, and his wife wrote me a long text saying I'm an a-hole for saying that her kids aren't my problem. So, am I the a-hole for saying that about my ex's kids? B.S. His kids aren't special need or have any disabilities. Your daughter is 10. If she doesn't want to go to her father's home, please seek full custody. A 15-year-old hurting her isn't okay. Full custody along with complete child support. 15-year-old is old enough to be arrested in my state. My state can be charged in juvenile court as young as 10 over the assault because that is what he is doing, assaulting her. Not the a-hole. Please speak to a lawyer about getting full custody and protecting your daughter from these physically and emotionally abusive a-holes. Yep, OP should factually document as much details as possible, 
Like October 7, 2023, late afternoon, just after arriving from school, daughter said steps on John Doe pushed her downstairs, where she hit her head. Noticeable bruise in back of head. Ex witnessed the incident but said nothing to either daughter nor stepson. Save all texts or emails and take photos of any injuries. OP should also, with lawyer's advice, look into having a child psychologist speak to the daughter and document her testimony. A text or email where the ex says kids will be kids, and there OP make clear in that same text exchange it's about her child's injury, is going to be clear evidence of his knowledge, if not involvement. Little update. Thank you for all the advice I've been getting. I talked to my daughter about not going to her dad's anymore, and she said that she still wants to see her dad because she loves him, but she feels like he doesn't love her. This upset me, because no 10-year-old should feel that way. I texted my ex saying that if he would like to see her, he should take her away from his house. And if he would rather not see her, I'll take this up to court and file for full custody. He said he didn't care. If I wanted, I could remove his parental rights. That he had his real children with him. I also say that I will be pressing charges on his tap's son, and he just ignored that text. So, I'm taking him to court. I also sent a screenshot to my friend who's a lawyer. Am I to get an update once everything is over?